So today is going to be the day where I do the wiring. Uh, I have the Holly Terminator X, basically plug and play harness for everything. So I have to figure out where everything is going to route and put a hole through the firewall and then plug everything in. This is one more step of this thing being closer to be finished. I'm going to pull this all apart, lay it out on the garage floor so you can let's see what it looks like. As you can see, this is extremely, extremely well labeled. So I should be able to run it and literally just plug each little section in and it's good to go. And then after everything's done, got to plug it all into this PCM, ECU, computer, whatever it's called. Anyway, so just got to plug everything back into this when everything is done and wired. Theoretically, the only things I should have to wire from the car is the ignition from the key, the fuel pump, and to the battery. Each of these sections are labeled pretty nicely. So this one says injectors, so this is going to plug into, you guessed it, the injectors. And each one has cylinder 8, cylinder 7, all the way through cylinder 1. With the 4.6 liter, they made it all too easy. Starting on the passenger side, you have 1, 2, 3, 4. Driver's side, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm just going to plug all these wires in, grab the spark plug ones, and plug those in too. By no means am I trying to hide all the wires completely, and I know it's not going to be like that. It's not going to be that perfect, shaved, tucked engine bay. What I'm going to do is tuck them as nicely as I can so they're not out in the open, wires all over the place, but I want it to look nice. The fuel injector and the coil pack wiring is now installed, and I actually really like the look of it. I'm leaving the tags on for now, uh, like my brother did for his build, just in case you have to, say, replace your fuel injectors or upgrade or something like that later on. That part is done. Before I get too far into getting all the rest of these wires in, like the knock sensor, crank sensor, all that kind of stuff, I need to figure out how I want to route this main wiring harness down through the firewall. The stock <laughs> firewall locations are uh, a couple plugs because the stock wiring harness has nothing on it. It's just like the headlight wiring is a part of it. And the main wiring harness like this, I have to actually cut myself a hole through the firewall and I have the two inch grommets to fix the hole afterwards after I get this through. There we go. Now that the grommet is on there, I can actually run all the rest of these wires down to their respective spots on the engine and then call the engine side wiring complete. Now I still got to do the battery to the starter, things like that, but at least the engine side of the Holly is going to be complete. Yeah. Yep. Got the wiring manual. I have everything routed through the firewall. So now I just got to start wiring things up at the fuel pump, the fan, uh, power to the computer, uh, all that fun stuff. And I need to shove it up underneath this dashboard here. There is a lot of room underneath the dashboard. I should be able to find a spot where I can mount the computer and the ignition coil drivers, which, um, yeah, these got to be mounted in somewhere. So I got everything in. I got the bracket made. I forgot to film the bracket, but I made this bracket, the bolts and the four holes for the holly. But the, the surrounding holes for the Holly computer aren't big enough to put the nut in. So, yeah, I'm working with that. All right, got the computer installed. Now I need to tuck all the wires up and hide them all up out of the way. Before I put the new tank in, got to pull the old tank out. And the old tank is a carbureted tank, so the fuel sump's at the bottom. New tank is not. It is going to be fuel injected. So I need to uh, pull this guy out, put the new one in. It's going to have the fuel pump on top. Sits down inside of it. Call me a fat head. <laughs> yeah.
So the question I kept asking myself is, how am I gonna mount up the fuel tank in the back? The vehicle itself is steel. The gas tank is aluminum, if you already know. The aluminum plus the steel kind of don't really mix well together. They don't play well together. My buddy Tyrell was like, why don't you just put gasket sealer on there? Which is what I'm gonna do. I got a can of this gasket sealer. Now, instead of using like one of those little, uh, little tiny ones you squeeze out by hand, I got this guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a bead all the way around the lip where it sits on the steel itself. So it'll actually sit on this gasket sealer. The stuff takes 24 hours to dry completely to a full cure. So I'm gonna put it on here right now, smooth it all out, get it nice and perfect, and then let it sit. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. Now, the fuel tank, the uh, rubber gasket stuff that I put on there, is actually really uh, really dry, really solid. I smoothed it out pretty well. Keep that aluminum from uh, touching the steel, because I don't know if you guys know about that, but the steel, aluminum together, actually creates uh, corrosion a lot faster. So that's, that's bad, you don't want that. So let's go through this in there. Okay, that was a little harder to get on video, but it's pretty easy. You set the fuel tank in and it actually sits in through the trunk on top and screws into the bottom here. So just hold nice and tight right there and it's, it's in. We have three openings now. One is gonna be for the actual fueling system, which goes right there. We have one in the middle for where the fuel pump, fuel everything goes through there, sucks up, pumps it out. And then the other one's gonna be for the fuel sender for where's the fuel at in the, in the gas tank. Yeah, first thing I do is actually measure how deep the tank is going to be. I need to cut almost three inches off of this guy. More than three inches off of this. Let's see if my measuring skills check out. Feels like it's not hitting or anything, so that's good. That is very, very good. So now I need to get this fuel pump sitting, something like that. Then once those two are connected, throw a zip tie around the whole thing so it holds it all together and throw it right back in there. So now in the kitchen, just heating up the water here. Luckily our hot water is very, very hot because wife likes super hot showers. So I'm gonna use one of the old kind of crusty cloudy glasses and fill this up with super hot water and stick this whole thing down into it. So it's gonna heat up that specific hose, and then I'm gonna put the other hose in there for the return line. Heat those two guys up so I can slide the fuel pump down onto the actual uh, hoses themselves. <laughs> okay, so after a lot of finagling and a lot of hot water, uh, I got the pump on here, I got the hose on here, all clamped up, ready to go. So I got the, the filter here, it's like a little filter bag. This guy's just gonna slip right here on the end, just like so. So now this is gonna be the filter in the actual tank itself. And then this just clips right on in here. So I am opting to use uh, your basic gasket sealer. So I'm just gonna throw some gasket seal on there all the way around, nice and tight, and tighten her up. And of course, you want to torque them down in a crisscross pattern, like a star pattern like I'm doing now. Uh, get everything nice and tight, and then you're going to see the squeeze out all the way around that. And everything should be nice and tight, and it should be nice and sealed. That's the biggie. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we're going to see you guys next week.